Welcome back to Smoke Your Ribs. This is episode four of my beginners only series. And today we're gonna to be discussing Kamado style cookers, how they work, how to set them up, and how to get the best results. Gonna get started right after this. If you have been following my channel for over the last eight and a half, almost nine years, then you have seen me use a variety of Kamado style cookers, the, the uh, ceramic cookers. I've used everything from Kamado Joe Classic, Kamado Big Joe, Grill Dome, the S&S, &S, and that's what we have here today. Take a look at this. This is all ceramics. That's how most of your Kamados are built, even though, with that said, there are steel Kamados, there are cast iron Kamados, but typically they are ceramics, which makes them heavy. If you look down in here, I'll show you the configuration. Almost all ceramic type Kamados will have what they call a firebox. And that's where you actually build your fire within this right here. And uh, most of them have a bottom grate. Now they do have some aftermarket baskets that makes it even easier, but for all you know practical purposes we're not getting into that today we're strictly getting in to just a basic simple Kamado now this is the S&S &S. so this Kamado is different than most any other Kamado and it has the ability to incorporate their slow and sear into this as well or it can be set up as a standard Kamado style cooker now since this is the only cooker that will do that, we're not going to even discuss the slow and sear and how that works in here. I'm going to talk and keep it basic just on Kamado cookers. If you were to buy any brand, how you would set it up and how you would cook. Now first off, like I said, this is your fire box. This is where your air comes up. Here is your lower vent right out here. This is where you make your adjustments for your air intake. It's got one behind here that's got perforated holes. You can either use that or you can just put them together and adjust your airflow here. And on the top side, let me get my grate back in. Top side, same thing. You got this upper vent here that you will dial in your different temperatures. So you're probably starting to tie this together. If you look at my previous videos, we talk about ventilation, especially on the kettle grill. It had a lower vent, upper vent. And in that video, I discussed that almost all of your smokers, well, actually all of your smokers, has got to be able to draft air in, usually at the lowest point, and exit air at the highest point. Na smoke naturally wants to rise, and so does heat. So that is the natural configuration of it. This was no different. The beauty of a Kamado is it's thick, ceramic walls once you get this up to heat it gets very very efficient you can put a load of lump charcoal in this and that's what most manufacturers rep, uh, recommend is a lump charcoal over the charcoal briquettes and uh, I will say it can burn either or but I primarily always go with lump I'll follow that to a T so that's what we're going with today so I guess the best way to show you is just to go ahead and put this in action and get it fired up. Gonna be doing a pork butt today. If you're a beginner, a pork butt is a very good choice to start with because it's a very forgiving meat. And what I mean by forgiving is it's got a lot of fat and marbling within this pork, which means it's super hard to dry it out. I've never been able to dry one out. It's gonna be moist and it's gonna be tender and you usually get great results first time out, first time ever trying one. So I I would recommend pork butt if you've never done any kind of barbecue and that's what we're doing today going to keep it basic going to keep it simple Ooh, boy look at those big chunks now i'm using the fogo lump charcoal they're super premium and that's why they call it super premium look at the size the sizes of some of these chunks here that is just those are huge and the beauty of that compared to that is they will burn a very long time now i do want some smaller chunks in there as well and not all not all manufacturers this lump is going to be that big because people refer to that as their cherry pieces okay 
that should be plenty plenty to do what we got to do just kind of spread this about a little bit that's more manageable pieces right there just lay our big ones off here to the side this will burn way longer than what I need it to but the beauty of a Kamado is so airtight you can shut off your bottom vent shut off your top vent it'll snuff that fire right out once you're done let's light it up I like to get this lump started right in the middle and what it does it starts to burn down and it burns out I usually start with these tumbleweeds this is nothing more but a fire starter you can also find these they're paraffin wax cubes they do very well and uh, they have another it looks almost like cardboard but like a compressed cardboard for lack of better terms and it's got some sort of flammable soaked into that they sell them as well I've used them in uh, previous videos but I like to take my fire starters keep them kind of centralized to the center here and it's really just as simple there's nothing to run in a Kamado it's just as easy as a web or anything else just a different style of cooker but the efficiency is what really sold me on these years ago all right, now make sure your bottom vent is all the way open. You want plenty of air while you're getting this thing up and going. So we just got it all the way open. And we're just gonna let these catch and burn. It's gonna take roughly 10 minutes. And at that point, I can go ahead and close my lid and start dialing in temps. So we're going pretty good right here in the center. Got a nice little fire established. So what I wanna do is get some smoke wood nearby, not right there on top of it because I've gotta get this up to temperature and I don't wanna burn this wood up too quick. So I'm gonna put some right here. Then I'm gonna lay some more right about here. That's one piece of pecan, one piece of hickory. It's very easy to over smoke in any kind of pit really so you have to be careful just from my experience using a Kamado in combination with a lump charcoal it's best to go a little bit less than more because you can't undo it once it's too much smoke it's too much smoke this should give it a nice little kiss of smoke and that's really all I like now what I like to do at this point is take my deflector plate and you can turn this deflector plate either up or down it really doesn't matter but it basically it just deflects the direct heat makes the heat come over the sides which gives you like two zone cooking like we've talked about in the past but instead of actual two zones you got one zone but the heat is being deflected by this very thick piece of ceramic here now on with our grate we're going to close our lid and what I'm going to do is keep an eye on this dial right here when I get up to around 200 degrees I'm gonna start choking back my upper vent I'm going to choke back my lower vent lower vents probably gonna be about no more than a quarter of an inch open and I'm basing that there again with experience on this particular Kamado they might may be a little different from one Kamado to the next but normally your bottom vents not cracked very much your upper vent may be one third to halfway open but i'll show you that when we get to it meantime we're just going to start building the heat in this warming it up i'm gonna go over here right now and get this pork butt prepped up I'm going to show you what i'm using this is backyard barbecue normally i like to trim some excess fat off and things like that not even going to worry about it today but what i am going to do is i'm going to put a mustard rub on this and the this mustard is strictly for a binder but i personally think that the acidity in this mustard also helps improve the overall flavor because it does something i'm telling you i apply it to my ribs i apply it to my pork butts any kind of pork like this that i'm doing a low and slow on and it always tastes better with the mustard binder so i've always done it and i will continue to keep doing it so we're just gonna put a thin layer of that on here so let me show you the rub i'm using this is from ps seasoning this is the notorious pig rub smells excellent i haven't tried this yet but i can see the red pepper flakes in that so I'm thinking this is going to have a little bit of heat as well. It's a good looking rub. Smells incredible. I should have put this in a shaker, but 
we're gonna be okay. Get a good coat on this. You wanna make sure you get your sides. Get it worked in all over this port butt. Just get you some good coverage on this and don't be shy with it. This is a very thick piece of meat and this season is not even going to penetrate in the center and that's why a lot of times after I shred and pull this I like to add more rub into the finished product as well and I will do that as well on this one. Now I like to go fat cap down when cooking on a Kamado because the heat is coming from the bottom even though it's circling around it and coming over the top there's going to be more intense heat trying to penetrate through that deflector plate. Not much but you do have added protection with the uh, fat cap and that's another reason I didn't trim it. Nice thick fat cap going to protect that meat. As soon as this pit gets up to temperature this is going on bring you right back. All right I am running about 225 and I can start with that. I wanted to get this around 275 actually. Pork is very forgiving at 275 degrees and it's going to really cut a lot of time off on the time it takes to cook this. So I've got my top vent about an eighth of the way, maybe a quarter of the way open. And uh, I'm at 225. My lower vent, it's cracked not even quite a quarter of an inch. So we're going to go ahead and raise this up. I'm fat cap down. We're going right over the deflector plate. All right, I've peaked at it one time at the three hour mark. We've been going five hours. Let's take another look at this. Oh yeah, man, it's getting a really nice color. It's nowhere near where we want this at. And I have decided to go ahead and go no wrap. I want to cook this all the way through just like you're sitting here. I'm holding pretty much around 250. So I just go ahead and let it take its time and go slower. Right now I'm at about 156 internal temperature. So we got to come up around another 50 degrees thereabouts before this is really pull apart tender. So let's close this back up, let our heat come back up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and end this video. This video is primarily showing you how to run a Kamado and what a fantastic job they do. Now, is it the best smoker there is? That all is, you know, subjectable to uh, your own opinions, really. I personally like the smoked meat that comes off an offset better than anything, but a Kamado definitely does a great job with it. It's pretty much similar to any charcoal wood combination type smoker. But the beauty again of this is the fact that it can retain all this heat and it's super efficient. And, um, and another good thing about it is you can really crank these up. You can make some outstanding pizzas. I have baked bread in Kamado cookers. It's really unlimited what you can do in these. They're very versatile. They can go from a smoker to a grill. They can be a hearth type oven. They're real functional in a lot of different areas and they excel at being a good oven. I guarantee you that. Are they the best smoker? Uh, my personal opinion, no, they're not. Do they get the job done? You bet. They do a really good job and they retain moisture very well. You have juicy meat without having to put a water pan in here or anything like that has been my, my experience. So I hope this has helped you understand Kamados, how they work. Very simple, not much different than a Weber kettle or any kettle for that fact. Not doing a taste test. This video is not about the food. It's more about the smoker and how to get that food where you want it. And I think we covered all bases on that. So I'm going to see you on the next episode, which is more than likely, not 100% sure, but more than likely it's going to be a drum smoker. And that will be our next video in this this series. It'll be episode five, I believe. So we're starting to kick them off here one by one. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Until next time, Smokey Ribs Barbecue.